Yes, indeed. Life indeed is a blessing. Welcome once again, www.saharafmradio.com, reaching you straight out of New York City. Yes, indeed, you're here, locked on Conscious Vibes. Conscious Vibes is your program of choice. And I welcome you this Wednesday, as I do every other Wednesday. This is a platform for conscious minds to get together and, and, and talk, you know? Trying to change the world to be a better place. Trying to change Africa to take its rightful place on, on the pantheon of nations. Yes, indeed. Today, we're doing something special. We've opened our doors to the organization Quilombo. Quilombo Initiative. Sorry, Quilombo Organization for Social Justice and Conflict Resolution. Quilombo is holding a conference, a Pan-African conference in Peki, Ghana, in the Volta region. And we are blessed to have, to have them on this platform to share with us what the conference is all about. We'll be speaking with Explo Kofi. Explo Nani Kofi, who is the director of Quilombo, after which we'll go into our regular People's Parliament and cut up the issue on board today. The issue is social justice. Government owes the people something. On this platform, last week I think, we made a point about the government having a responsibility to the people who elect them, even if it's a, even if it's a monarchy they still owe the people some responsibility. Social justice is what we're discussing today. So to join us today for the initial discussion is the man Explo Nani Kofi straight from Ghana. Explo Nani Kofi, as I said before, is the director of the Quilombo organization. You're welcome to the program, Explo. Thank you. Yes, sir. So, sorry for hanging you up on the... I mean, sorry for holding you up on the line for, for, for a bit of time. We'll, we'll get straight to business. Can you... Yeah, that's no problem at all, yes. Can you, can you please start by telling us what Quilombo is all about? What is Quilombo? What do you do? Oh, uh, Quilombo is actually a network of various uh, initiatives which uh, are towards uh, building a movement of capacity to help uh, transform uh, Africa and Africans uh, in their relationship with the rest of the world. And so it's a project which uh, is in the interest of African unity 
African self-determination and social justice. And so in one way, people will say it's a movement which is uh, towards advancing uh, Pan-Africanism. Um, it's uh, our observation that uh, for our people to advance and our society to advance, then we have to reverse the uh, kind of relationship which have been built over the years in terms of our political and economic architecture and its global relationship. Um, so, um, which is the main thing uh, which is behind uh, our work? Mm. Um, first of all, I want to maybe come to the uh, word Kilombo because I'm sure there are a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, I was actually going to ask you where that. we that word uh, from. And first, uh, Kilombo is uh, we started first as um, a journal, a Kilombo. Uh, what, what, what's African the meaning of Kilombo, though? General. Is it the word? Yes, what so I'm coming mean? to that. That's, what, that's why I'm coming okay. to That's what I'm coming to. All right. And when we're going to say the name for the journal, what we influenced is that we wanted a word from an African language, a word which is a word of resistance, a word which is related to reversing the unfair relationship that Africa is in, I wanted this word from an African language, and also the word would have been a word which has been used as a word of resistance both on the continent and the diaspora. Because one thing about Pan Africanism is the unity of the Africans on the continent the and, and the Africans yes. on the diaspora. Hmm. So when we go to uh, the book, How uh, Europe Underdeveloped Africa by Walter Rodney, mm -hmm. that great uh, Guyanese historian. Yes. Um, we have a list of African re um, resistance to uh, European occupation on the continent. And among all these resistances in that book, the one which lasted longest, uh, Africans uh, repelled the Europeans, was the Queen Inzinga's. Um, uh, resistance, uh, when the Queen Zika led resistance to yeah. Portuguese occupation in Angola. And when Queen Nzinga fought back the uh, Portuguese, they, worked, they fought from their Quilombos. And so Quilombo comes from Kimbundu language of the Angolan people. And it means a vital settlement or a launching part for battle or a settlement of resistance. So, mm. so it basically represents uh, a fortress, Angola, a fortress Angola, of resistance, yeah. if, if I'm right. Yes, we, uh, we have a few questions yes. to, to go through before we go to the People's Parliament. So I would, I would like yeah, us yeah, to yeah, cut yeah, to chase yeah. on this one. Yeah, um, yeah. So, and also in Brazil, when the enslaved Africans were um, taking the end, the uh, built their resistance against the slave masters and they built fortresses. They call these fortresses quilombos. So this is a word which, you know, in the diaspora, which is in the Americas, mm. was a word of resistance and in uh, Angola. So mm. it's an African word from the Kimbundu language and it's being used both in uh, the continent and uh, and in the and diaspora. The diaspora. So, that, that, so that is that, why we pick uh, the word Kilombo. That That's sounds the, like a good choice, uh, too. Tell, can, so, yeah. tell us about the, the conference. You're you are holding a Pan African conference in. Yes, Peking. we're having a, yes, uh, the uh, conference on Africa, Africans, and social justice. This conference, um, one of the things uh, we see is that it is true. Um, the sacrifice of uh, some of our people uh, and the uh, struggle that we uh, managed to end were the uh, enslavement, the, uh, what people call the slave trade and colonialism, to draw us into the present uh, uncompleted uh, struggle for independence, where we've got a flag and anthem, and we still have to 
deal with the economic aspects of colonialism, which we are still in. And we would, uh, and we see that it is necessary for us to continue in that same trend of the sacrifices which led to us getting this far. And what happened is that a lot of our people uh, have just relaxed as if everything is cool. Yep. And this conference is to help us uh, discuss and uh, look at how we can make sacrifices which would uh, help us to complete our independence, which will help us to deal with the economic colonization which is still there, which unfortunately our own people who call themselves governments are maintaining and uh, running our society on behalf of economic and political interests exterior hmm. to, to, to Africa. Hmm. That's, that's, that's fantastic. That, that sounds to me like a very good cause. That definitely is a good cause. What's the theme of the, of the conference? The theme of the conference, uh, we've made it a permanent theme, mm. which is that um, Africa, Africans, and social justice. Mm. So Africa, Africans, and social justice, which is permanent. Okay. So in, in your in your own right. definition, how, how what would you say is social justice? You know, loosely defined. What would you say is social justice? Oh, social justice is a situation of fairness in society. So when you have injustice, when you have unfairness, which uh, in, in this case uh, the unfairness. Uh, of Africa's relationship with the rest of the world, the situation in which Africa's resources are not controlled by Africa itself, the situation in which Africa's mineral resources go to the rest of world, uh, the world and uh, uh, Africans are impoverished while they have all these uh, rich uh, resources, they have all this wealth in their soils, uh, which is unfair. So in changing that, we are um, meeting the conditions of social fairness in society, which is the social justice that we are looking at here. And that Africans everywhere they are, are disproportionately represented in the uh, marginalized sections of society. Everywhere people of African descent are, all across the group. And historically, um, they have been brought into these societies. The original... Uh, African immigrants in every society have been brought in as marginalized sections of the society. So there's a, a situation of unfairness, and to bring this to an end will mean bringing about social justice. Mm, great. I also realize that you deal with conflict resolution. Yes, uh, Conflict okay. resolution in actually, the sense Actually, that I will, I will ask you a question related to that towards the end of this interview. But before that, let me ask you um, about your street parliament. You have a, a program called the street parliament. What's, what's that all about? Oh, street parliament, as the word itself goes, um, but on the street, in the open space, where you can have a parliament is about um, a place of representation mm. or institution of representation. Uh, the situation we have is a situation in which, um, at present, it's those who have money who influence people, and as a result of that, they get in yep. to be our elected representatives. That's right. So the interest of majority of our people is excluded. So we are trying to um, develop a mechanism where uh, it, it will be open to all people to be able to contribute to our decision making, to be able to uh, come up with the things which are uppermost on their minds, the things which are uh, in, uh, uppermost in their interests, and uh, uh, at open spaces, so that through the media and others, the governments uh, will be able to uh, feel that this is what is uh, in their interest. Also, it can even contribute to us permanently, the people uh, involving these as institutions of decision making. Mm. Because the people, those of us behind Quilombo, we see uh, as very important ending the um, foreign domination of economies, the importance of creating 
uh, democratic atmosphere in working environments where ordinary workers would be would have a say in their working places. The fact that the decision making base should be broadened so that um, it's not only those who have money to buy the uh, the representation slot who uh, monopolize this, but that people are uh, involved. Mm. Uh, developing structures of uh, this year, which will make this possible, and we think that this will eventually lead to a program uh, which has uh, uppermost uh, the interest of majority of our, our people. Well, that sounds uh, like another lofty idea. These are things idea. that will lay the basis for a true African self-determination. Okay, that's, that sounds like another lofty idea. But can I ask you, what impact is, the, yeah. is it making? Is it another talk shop? Or you actually have a roadmap for making sure that, you know, the street parliament, the, the decisions that are taken at the street parliament or the discussion that go on in the street parliament actually has a binding effect on the lives of people? Yes. So the, uh, recently in our own country here in Ghana, um, as a result of uh, demonstrations in Ashima, burning of ties and destruction of property, the, the, the government had to respond to such road construction. What we are saying is that it is possible to put about the same pressure and influence government policy and uh, make government to act without that violence and the burning of ties. And so when we have the street parliament, uh, then in a peaceful atmosphere, with the same pressure which uh, led to government action, uh, will be there. And the fact that when this becomes a permanent feature, and it's taking place from time to time, then governments and the ruling political parties or even opposition parties cannot ignore uh, uh, this. Mm. All right. Thank you so much. Our time is far spent, and um, we actually went beyond time. Thank you so much, Explo. But can, let me ask you this last question before you go. What is the date for the, for the, um, the conference, and how can we get involved, those of us outside? outside Ghana, yes, who are not the, there physically. The, How can the, we get the, involved? The, yeah, the conference is from the 27th to the 29th of September um, 2013 in Peking, in Ghana. Uh, and uh, the to be involved, uh, you can email kilombo.center at yahoo.co.uk you can also check us on uh, the Facebook page, Quilombo Center for Citizens' Rights and Conflict Resolution, comma, Peki, comma, Ghana. Or you can check the event page for the um, Quilombo uh, 2013 Conference on Africa, Africa, and Social Justice. You can check things on our website, www.quilomboeducation.org. Or you can also phone class 233, which is the uh, international Country code, code for yep. Ghana, then 241-498-912. Um, and all, all this can okay. get you. That that uh, sounds like a, a, that sounds like quite a handful. So what I will I will suggest is that please go to our Facebook page, Conscious Vibes on Sahara Radio, SaharaFMRadio.com, and then share your information with us so that our regular listeners can actually go there. And because people might be listening that don't even have like immediate access it's to a pen or something vibe. to write conscious vibes vibes is spelled v y b z so it's conscious vibes on saharafmradio.com on our facebook page okay. and share as much information as you can so that those of us who are not in ghana at the moment can be part of this lofty idea thank you very much explo okay. and i'm sure that you uh, will definitely be you with us much, again uh, for giving us a space and you are welcome in return thank you so much Explo Nani Kofi. Explo Nani Kofi is the director of the Quilombo Organization for Social Justice and Conflict Resolution. We're right back with the People's Parliament. Stick and stay. Don't go nowhere.
Yes, as we wait to, to get Parliament seated, let me read some of the comments that we've received on our Facebook page. Lakwami. Lakwami is a regular member of Parliament in this house. Lakwami says, The development of social justice in Africa is essential. The development of social justice in Africa is essential to our economic and political development. Fortunately, many African nations have signed international treaties and have written constitutions that provide the means to which complete social justice may be established. It is important as the, developing, as the development continues that we keep in mind that justice entails reasonable and realistic systems that are fair to both governments as well as the people. Let's keep in mind that justice does not mean the ideal solution. There is still a long way to go, but I'm sure significant progress will be achieved sooner than we expect. Good vibes, Lakwami. Thank you for, for that. And I think I associate with those comments as well, for sure. We're still trying to raise parliament. And then we will be airborne with the discussion straight away. We, we're talking about social justice in Africa today. Does the government owe the people anything or does the government have the right to just flow as they wish, just do whatever it is they like? When people go to the polls to, to cast their votes for presidents and members of parliament and senators and assemblymen and whatnot, what, is, what really is the implication of that? I think it's a contract between the people and these people who seek to represent them. Or do they represent them properly? Do they see to their social justice? Do the people have education? Do they have drinking water? Is it right for members of parliament to be taking outrageous sums of money as benefits and whatnot when the people who voted them into power don't have water to drink? Basic necessities in life. I mean, I don't have an issue with a parliamentarian driving a, an SUV as long as the people at least have water to drink. They have schools to go to. They have roads. They have jobs. They have basic things. A recent research that I was involved with in Ghana revealed that the money that is used to pay and try to make parliamentarians comfortable would easily develop their constituencies. What is worse is that these parliamentarians have, you know, 
funds that is allocated to them by government? Do the people have a say in how these funds are used? Sometimes they build uncovered gutters, culverts, whatever you want to call them. They build substandard roads. They build toilets that they themselves would never use. And then they want, they want the, the people to praise them that they've done something for them. Not this one, yeah. Let's talk about it. Conscious Vibes, www.saharafmradio.com. The program of choice on your station of choice. Reaching you straight from New York City. had issues from the beginning so we could not really start on time and all of that but that's all right as long as we still have time to to do what we've got to do point is that when you have conscious people reasoning just a word could make a difference welcome to parliament kweku yeah thank you welcome to parliament noah thank you very much thank you for having me all right. So as we go along, we'll have the rest join us. But this train really doesn't wait. So let's start with you guys. Um, let me start okay. with you. Let me start with you, Kweku. Uh, social yeah. justice. What What would you loosely define it as? What is social justice in your in your estimation? Well, social justice is supposed to be a fair and proper administration of law. You know, mm. conforming to the natural law. That all persons, irrespective of tribe, religion, race, skin color, whatever, are to be treated equally without prejudice. That's how far I can explain it now. Mm, great. Considering that definition that you just gave, if you take a casual yeah. look across Africa, do you think we are enjoying any level of social justice at all? Well, to some extent, one can say yes or no to that, you know, because if you look at the current situation going on, uh, one can say yes to it, and one can also say no. But uh, there are a lot of reports going on, even amongst ourselves. Let's take, for instance, the political scene that we are experiencing in Africa. Uh, I'm talking from Ghana, so I'll use Ghana as an example. Mm. You hear a lot of people drawing lines between tribes uh, when it comes to dealing in politics, you know. Mm. And I think it, it's really going on. And this is something that we need to look into because as one people who want to you know, unite Africa. If a country in Africa is divided along tribal lines based on politics, 
I think it will have a great effect on the continent as a whole. Okay. Noah. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. That's right. Noah, what would you define social justice as? Do you relate it to civil rights? Um, yes, I would define social justice as all those things stated and basically just a, a fair playing grounds for everyone, just as, just as was said before, where it does not matter what race and or ethnicity, background, um, economic status you have, um, power within the community you have, um, everyone is still treated fairly equal. Um, under the law, that's when the justice part comes in. Um, but I would say there is a fair amount of social freedom more expressed in the continent of Africa um, than in other places. But when it comes down to whether that's connected to a certain political party or um, government state, it is much harder to, um, I would say, assess and say is, is going up, uh about fairly or proper. Mm. What, 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 how important is social justice to start with? We know, they are, you know, how important really is social justice? Is it something we can do without? Noah? Um, well, I would say it could be done without in a perfect world where people have personal justice and personal um, morals, even though you can claim different morals, uh, each person can. But uh, it could be done without. But until, you know, the, the level, the playing field is leveled in, in every individual's heart, uh, I believe social justice does help in certain areas where people can be taken advantage of. But as an individual, you always have the choice to be taken advantage of, and whether you let that happen or not is essentially up to you in the big picture. But many people are, especially in the continent of Africa, born underprivileged uh, with that ability. Oh, great. So I think it, it, it's, it's definitely necessary right now, but in, in the, the golden future, it could be done without, I do believe. Okay. Now, I'm going to give two scenarios, and I'm going to split it between the two of you. I want Kweku to take Ghana, because obviously you're speaking from Ghana, and you seem to be very much abreast with what's going on in Ghana. And I want, I want um, Noah to take um, the, the situation in Zimbabwe. Let's start with, okay. with, with Kweku. In Ghana... There, there was an election last year. One party won, yeah. the other party lost. The issue went to court. Tomorrow, we're waiting for the Supreme Court to, to rule whether the election, whether the president of Ghana is the legitimate president or whether there should be a rerun or whether he should be, you know, uprooted or whatever it is. The people yeah. that voted for, for the president, if the Supreme Court should say, you know, let's, you know, put him aside and then bring someone else in or let's go for a revote or whatever. Would social justice have been achieved in this situation? Oh, okay. Uh, as we are waiting for the verdict tomorrow. And I know, and before you go on, I know you don't want to, you know, be called before the panel and be like a few people that we know before. <laughs> But, you know, this is not defamatory at all. I mean, it's not anything, you know. So, yeah, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, as you were saying, the people went to the post and decided to vote for a particular person who is now certain or ruling now. Mm -hmm. But then the opposition seems to have a problem with that because maybe their investigations revealed that uh, there were fraudulent in court that maybe went on during the elections. Mm. Do the people have spoken their mind? But then that's why we have the courts. And if you can recollect, the EC told them to take any reservation that they have to the law court. Yep. And they did. So since anybody, including all of us, have the right to seek justice from the court. I think it's appropriate that they take it to the court. Is it a good example and of social justice? Because people voted and they think that they've been shortchanged, but then there is the Supreme Court, which is there to, to you know, intercede for, for, for them. Yes. Is that a good example of social justice? Yes, it's 
a very good example. Okay, so let me go to, to, to Noah now. In Zimbabwe, President Mugabe won the election, or so he says. The opposition said he did not win. Now, the, the, the situation in Zimbabwe is, is peculiar because there's a group of people who really support what President Mugabe stands for. And then there are other people who think that what he's doing actually is de depriving them of basic things that they deserve in life, you know, as a result of the sanctions. Is Mugabe doing justice to, to his people at all? Um, well, if he is allowing... Hello? Hello, Noah? Hello? Uh-oh. I seem to have lost Noah. We'll be right back. We'll be right back as soon as we're able to raise. Are you there, Dr. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. All right. So let's go on with you to, to, to be able to, to, to raise Noah. All right. Or do we have Noah back on the line? All right, cool. Let's 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 go on with you, Kweku. Um, in just like I said a, a while ago, you have people who are, who get into parliament by virtue of people voting for them, right? After they get there, these people don't have water to drink, they don't have schools, they don't have basic necessities. But the parliamentarians sit together and decide that. If you don't give us X amount as our allowances, you know they they you know the things they do. Yeah, yeah. What do you think should be done to these people? Seriously, I mean, I'm not even going to ask if it's right or wrong. It is wrong, morally yeah, and yeah. everything. It's just wrong. What do you think yeah, we can yeah. do as a, as a people to put these people on on their feet? Yeah, always we have reservations but then the channel that sometimes you want to channel you were trying to reach has a voicemail box that has not been set up yet please try go ahead Kweku. hello yes go ahead yeah yeah the channel that normally we use to address these issues don't seem to be right and like what the people give for instance we should have a collective body of the masses who vote these people into power to come out and speak about what these people are doing which is not helping us because we vote them and we are we give them that mandate with the expectation that they will also return back the mandate that we give them that's their responsibility to us or to the community as a whole but here is the case we vote for them i went to a certain region for a year or so. I never met the MP there. I only saw him when he came back in the election year hmm. to re campaign for re vote into the parliament. Meanwhile, and I'm sure the people still voted for him. Yes, they did. Are we daft or what? In the area as an example. I live in an area where the road has not yet been constructed. And the MP in my area has been in Parliament since '96. So I used to talk to a group of people. Why? You mm -hmm. live here, an MP who has been in Parliament since '96, and your road is so untouched. It's it's it, it just it just beats me. It just beats me. But let, let's go to Noah. I I here we raised Noah, but can you address the issue, Noah? Yes, I'm sorry. I missed the last couple minutes trying to reconnect. What, what oh, was well, that? yeah, I was asking you about the situation in Zimbabwe. I mean, I, I was just saying that the, it's a peculiar situation because you have one group of people who think that Mugabe should be doing what he's doing because he is standing for, for an achievement of their social rights, which is their, their right to the land they live on, their, their, their right to the, the, the land that they originate from. And then there's another group of people who think that Mugabe is doing the service because he is incurring the sanctions of the powers that be and therefore depriving them of basic things that should also be deemed as social, you know, civil rights. 
Yes. What's your take okay, on that? Well, I would say, um, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot of talking points on social justice in, in Africa in particular. Mm. But the problem with social justice is it's very hard to find social justice in a, um, a, a justice system that has you know, many holes in it. Mm. If there was one hole and it was easy to fix, then, you know, the boat wouldn't sink and there wouldn't be a lot of turmoil on the boat. Mm. But if there's many holes, it's very hard for the ship to float. You know, and while you try and patch up one, which would be this election and the uh, just um, President Mugabe in power, um, it w- I feel like it will always be counter like productive to the whole situation because they're working within a system that might not be fully justified, essentially, or fully fair. Um, and so, I mean, I would say that is that is one of my big quarrels with the whole. Um, situation um, going on fully justified, mm. um, essentially because you can't, uh, and that that was that was one thing with the starting of America. You know, in the very beginning, we went through a long period of uh, parliamentary debates and congressional debates and con- continental con- congressions, and they went back and forth on on everything. You know, mm. and. You know, the argument did not stop. You know, it, it didn't stop with, you know, the the president wasn't elected until the whole system was in place. Mm. You know, and it, it's it's sad to say, but it's not it's not you know too sad as in we can't fix it. But you know, fifty the past hundred fifty year hundred years in Africa, that's when all of these nations were created. Yep. And they were created very quickly, and they were created without the opinion of the people essentially yeah and that is where a lot of the turmoil it, you know is still at today you know what about the justice for the people well that's what the justice system is supposed to be there for hmm. um in america where i'm stationed right now we get this confused in our luxurious state but um you know that was the initial intent and it, the social justice system is for the people and it needs to be set up by the people hmm. you know so, america is sliding right now but um you know that was the, the the golden ticket in the beginning right so you you also realize that some things that will be considered as basic social or civil rights in america mm-hmm. for instance will be deemed a luxury in africa you know mm-hmm. like i was i was watching the news the other day and then a tree fell on the pavement and it was like all over the news. Somebody's head was going to roll because the tree had remained on the pavement for over 24 hours. Oh, Trust gosh. me, that, that item is still on the news as we speak right now, even though I'm mm-hmm. sure someone has already suffered for that. In Africa, if a tree falls on your pavement and then it, you know, somebody comes and cuts it within the next few minutes, that will be considered a luxury, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yes. Is there a disparity between, I mean, is social justice territorial? Is it something that has to be done, that has to, you know, do with a particular group of people or a particular area or something like that? Does it have cultural implications? Do we have different, you know, well, rights for different um, people? Yes, uh, I, I think I, I feel what you're saying. Is, is something different in Af- in America than in Africa, and essentially when it was set up. But um, it, it really isn't. It comes down to the you know the gist of everything. There's nothing different. Um, mm. There are many differences, uh, small details like you know the landscape, the resources of the country, all of these things. Hello. That, um, when coming to play hello. nowadays, yes, hello. No, no, go ahead. Hello? Go ahead, Noah. Go ahead. Um, we, we, let's welcome Echo. Let's welcome Echo to the show. But Echo, please hang on a second. Let Noah finish his submission, and then we'll have you on. My producer has graciously given me a few more minutes so we can stretch this a bit more. So okay. if, if you can finish quickly, Noah, and then we'll go to Echo. Okay, sounds good. Yeah, so basically, I don't think there's any difference. But, um, you know, the African justice system was set up by Westerners and Europeans, and they set it up in that mindset, the, the one that works for them. The one that was set up in America was set up by the American people, you know, of that time period. And so they took their time and, you know, fought for their land, you know. And that's what, if, if 
that people of Africa in a certain district, when it's broken up in states, had, you know, the ability to run and, you know, create difference, I think that debate would be much stronger mm. throughout the nation. You know, they would, they would know what they want a little bit stronger, but considering it was uh, done at a different time uh, in a different manner than, than their own, you know, they, the African people, I feel, as are disconnected from their, their own justice system. Mm. Fantastic. Welcome to the program, Echo. Sorry we weren't able to raise you earlier, so you've missed part of the discussion. But let's cut to chase with you. We, we're discussing social justice, obviously, as you're aware. And I'm, I'm, I want to put this question to you. In Ghana, for instance, which I know you're familiar with, we have a certain, you know, a law that says that people, I mean, parliamentarians cannot be, you know, arrested if, even if they did something wrong, they cannot be arrested on the premises of parliament and whatnot and whatnot. Meanwhile, other people, even chiefs, can be arrested when they do something wrong. Where is the social justice? If everybody's supposed to have equal rights and everything, why is it that somebody that I spend time to elect into parliament in, kind of builds a system around himself to protect himself from certain things but leaves me bare? Where is the social justice? Echo. Yeah, yeah, hello, yeah. Mm. Thanks for having me on the program once again. And uh, the issue you you just raised is, yes, a very dicey issue. I, I seriously don't see where the social justice comes in because uh, if we talk about parliamentarians in Ghana, I think they, they are enjoying, I don't even want to call it privilege because it's just, they are just treating the the populace. They, I don't think it's right at all for them to be exempt from like uh, arrest and stuff like that when they commit an offence. And because I remember there was a time one of them they said he wasn't even on the premises of uh, the parliament, but he was on the way to the parliament, and because of that, he he couldn't be arrested. Mm. Meanwhile, he had committed an offense. So it's, it's just, I, I don't see how to justify this, like, social justice. No, I don't think it's social justice in any way. Okay, what, let me go to Kweku. For, for, you've been quiet for a while, Kweku. Are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Great. If these people refuse to give us what they promised us in our contract, I keep saying, if you go to the polls and cast a vote, it's a contract that you are signing with, the, with whoever is asking you for the vote. Yeah. If they refuse or if they fail to give us what they promised mm. as, as pertains with social justice, basic amenities for everybody, equal rights for everyone, what do you think we can do in retaliation? Yeah, first of all, uh, the people should have a common forum whereby they discuss issues of this sort. Our MP promised us this, and we voted him into power. He couldn't deliver. So they can organize a mouthpiece, a forum, mm -hmm. which will be a collective effort of the persons involved or the persons in those communities and they can send a petition to whoever to voice out their feelings about the MP. To Secondly, who? they can to, who, Kweku? to the through MP? the appropriate channel. No. Through the appropriate channel. Mm. Either through local government or whoever is in charge of those things. Okay. Or even through the media. It can be even published in the media because a lot of people listen to the media more than even mm. the president. <laughs> I may put it that way. Okay. Secondly, they can, refuse, they can refuse to vote for the person in the next day. That sounds more like a, like, like a viable option to me, if you ask me. Yes. <laughs> and, and it's about time the masses are educated to know that they vote people into power deliver to them. It's like being elected on a board. 
or being appointed as a manager of a company. If you are not able to be, if you are not able to deliver, you are fired. Okay, Echo. Let me ask yes. you. Um, Kweku has just said what I'm sure you heard what he said, but you also realize that sometimes, if you try to do that, they also have their own schemes. We've seen demonstrations in Ghana that have met with counter demonstrations and counter counter demonstrations. You know, do you think these are these things will achieve anything at all if we decide to go through sending petitions and you know talking and all of that? Unfortunately, in a place like Ghana, petitions don't work. It, it, it just doesn't work. Well, the one we, the one we, at the we, Supreme Court seems to have worked though. It's it, yeah, yeah, that is that that is a unique a unique one, and we we all know why that particular one is working. Mm. But when it comes down to the local government level, things of that nature it doesn't work because just like you're saying, once people even decide to demonstrate against, let's say, the district chief executive for non-performance, the district chief executive and party chairman will quickly organize a counter group to also come out onto the streets to say, oh, yeah, he's doing a good job. These people are just jealous or something of that sort. Mm -hmm. So usually, petitions of that nature doesn't work. I think the only way we can really do something about it is like the previous speaker uh, said, uh, ref refuse to vote them again into parliament or to uh, whichever position they were occupying before they uh, reneged on their promises. Mm. Sad thing, though, is yeah. that if you vote them out, they still go out with a fat, big fat, what do they call that? That is, yes, that is it. Yes, that is one <laughs> one thing I was just about to talk as well, uh, like talk about as well, because they don't deserve those ex gracia because the person has done a shoddy job, possibly embezzled money and all those things, and then when he, they are asked to go, they have to go with such a, a package. Uh, I do, remember. Do, do you uh, think... uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I, I, I remember our uh, late uh, ex-president, uh, uh when he came to power at first, had a problem with the uh, then opposition because he, he felt the ex Garcia being given to the, his predecessor and the parliamentarians was far in excess. Monolithic. Uh, like, it's it's yeah. absurd. So, yeah, okay. yeah, so he decided to do something about it too reduce the package and stuff like that, and it became a big issue. And I, I was really surprised because I, I've been living in Australia for quite a while. I've seen uh, governments being changed about two or three times here. And John Howard was in power for quite a long while. When it was time for him to leave, he wasn't even one third of what the then Ghanaian president, uh, the ex-president, was being given. Mm -hmm. No, it, yes. And, and, it, and, and this is happening okay. in a country which is rich, okay? Which, Very which, good. Which, which, is, which, and, and, not, and, not, just, and not just Australia rich. They actually... Really rich. And, and they're not just rich. They actually provide for the people. They have a very yes. good social welfare system. Yes. And then in Ghana, where there is hardly any social welfare... The politicians are taking all this money. That's a sin. Yes. Anyway, it's, it's, it's just sickening if you if you sit down and look at what is happening. Yes. Okay. Anyway, anyhow, let me go to let me go to Clay, um, Noah now. Um, actually, yeah. we just have about three minutes left, so I'll just spread it between the three of you quickly. Let me start with with okay. Noah. Noah, if you okay, if yes. you look I across Africa generally. What mm -hmm. can we do to ensure that the people get the social justice that they deserve? Okay, yes. Uh, I want to start just by saying with the law you described where the uh, prime minister and the, the government officials can get away with it, but the chiefs can't. Mm -hmm. That's just a prime example of my story a second ago of how the African governments that are in place all over Africa um, – we're not set up by those people, you know, that live there. That's an obvious disclaimer that shows right. that truth. That's right. Um, 
you know, and so I would say basically, you know, the best thing I think for Africa that, that can be done, the African people must do is essentially learn from their, you know, their brothers in this world that have done it themselves, you know, in America, you know, they said, you know, you know, petitions and peaceful protests don't work. And they said, well, you know, it's the only way to work because that is the truth. If you want peace, if you really want, uh, you know, a productive thing, two wrongs do not make a right. It's very clear. And, you know, you, there will be some losses. There will, it, will, it will not be easy. You know, to change the tide, it's not easy. Mm. But, you know, you have to go about it the right way. And the best way would be to learn from who, whoever's done it and use your resources wisely. And your biggest resource is yourself. Yep. is your community, is the people around you. And just like what this show is doing, you know, just educating, you know, the people peacefully about peaceful possibilities and, you know, probabilities that we can all work towards. And I think that's, that's the first thing and the last thing we can really do. Fantastic. Words of wisdom. Kweku, what's your take? <laughs> yeah. What I can say is, you know, the masses need to be educated. To know that if justice are not given to them as it's expected, there are peaceful ways that they can protect. Because we've seen it happening all over, and it sometimes works. Mm -hmm. And also, there should be a way whereby, at the end of every year, the communities or the constituencies are given the chance to audit the arrest in Parliament, either MPs, DCs, MCs, or whoever is in charge. The people are supposed to be given that option to audit them, to know what they are doing. Mm. And if it doesn't go down well with the community, they can protest against him or her. Mm. And uh, we also need to organize frequent Parliament on the streets or forums to act because most of these things, uh, excuse me to say, illiterates don't understand most of these things. But I think if we take the effort to educate each other on the need to demand rights from the people that we vote into power, I think it will help because Africa is very rich. Mm. We don't need to be suffering. The masses don't need to be suffering whilst a few are enjoying That's what right. is supposed to be shared among the masses. That's right. Thank you. Echo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I, I wholeheartedly support uh, what the uh, speaker just said. It hinges on education. We really need to educate our people. And... Uh, I think there's some good somewhere along the line because their abysmal performance is, in a way, providing an answer to this. A typical example is like the way people are starting to vote in Ghana, like the voting pattern in Ghana now. Some of the MPs at the point realize that, wow, I, if, if I go, I, I try to go again this time, I'm going to be totally humiliated. So the wise ones withdrew. They didn't even contest. Mm -hmm. Some of them, too, still went ahead. There is this uh, typical case in Aguna Suedru where somebody who was contesting for the election organized a massive party for people to come and eat, mm -hmm. to drink the day before the voting. And on the day of the voting, when the results came out, it's like 90% of the people who came to his house to eat did not even vote for him. Mm. And the, the worst part was after he lost, people came back to do a, mo a mop up of whatever was left. <laughs> so. Gradually, <laughs> 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 yes, people are, are getting wiser by the day. Mm. No, like the previous speaker said, it, it all hinges on education. We really need to educate our people. and. I, I I support his idea of like community for a, like maybe every quarter or something. Yes, we need to meet our representatives and question them where we feel we we, we don't understand certain things. We Most have to yeah, seek Most explanations definitely. from them. 
Most definitely. Yeah. Okay, now I'm just going to end by asking you, this is just a yes or no, you know, um, I, I, you know, because the time is fast spent, so I just want a, like a direct yes or no. Let me start with you, Echo. Who yeah. do you think is going to come out victorious in tomorrow's um, who, the, the Supreme Court? Who, who is the Supreme Court going to rule in favor of? Who do you think? NDC or NPP? I think the rule in favor of NDC. Okay. Kweku? Yeah, I also go for NDC. Okay. Um, Noah, I'm going to ask you a slightly different question. Do you think okay. we should do away with the present parliamentary presidential system that we have running in Africa and replace it with, say, a forum of chiefs or something like that? Yes or no? Do you think that's, that's viable? Um, you know, the, the chief system, just like back in the day, could also be corrupted. So yeah. the answer, I would say directly, immediately, no, mm -hmm. you know. But yeah. um, it, essentially, there's nothing wrong with whatever it is, but whatever it is, just make sure it's justified. You know, Definitely. it's, it's just as well, as, as the beginning of our conversation started with. Definitely. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you, Noah from the Thank U.S. You, Thank you, Kweku from Ghana, and thank you, Echo from Australia. This thank is you, indeed the People's Parliament, and we hope Not to yet. see you again thank next you, next week. Next week, the verdict would have been given. We are discussing yep. the election petition in Ghana. We will try to do justice to that. Hopefully, the judges don't come after us for, you know, whatever, because the, the verdict would have been given. Until such times. We don't contempt them, anyway. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Anyway, we've not said anything wrong, oh, Justice Atuguba. I beg. I haven't said anything. But anyhow, we'll see you again in Parliament next week. And thanks, guys, for listening. Let me also say that this show, this show actually goes live on live stream. So you can actually watch the show as well. You're not just listening. You can actually watch it live on live stream. If you go on live stream... And then you just type in Sahara, Sahara Reporters, it should pop up and it should give you our account. And you can just click on it and you can watch the show as well as listen. If, you, if you're not able to watch, you can just listen. That's fine. Again, the show is posted on YouTube. So if you go on YouTube and you type Conscious Vibes, you should have a whole array of past programs that we've had you know, over, over, the, over the past months. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you guys for coming on the show. Thank you, Nick, my producer. You are fantastic, believe me. Thank you, Sami. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know who's on social media today, but thank you, the whole Sahara team. And thank you, Omoyele Showare, for giving us this platform. You are truly a revolutionary, and we salute you. One love till next week. Bye-bye.
my blues away You make me happy and gay hey, Come, this your sunshine day Come, this your sunshine Five, ten, fifteen, twenty Sunshine See, 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 nana come Sunshine Say I love you, say I love you, say take a piece of sunshine. 